Hi guys, I'm Sam from the Unity of Life and welcome back to my wonderful channel. So, just a quick reminder of what we've been doing. We've been looking at animals. We started off looking at um, how animals sort of fit into the human society, um, how we treat animals and how they treat us and how we've been inspired by them and created a lot of different and weird and wonderful engineering things um, and we've also looked at some of the laws as well um, that um, surrounds animals and then we went on to behaviour in the last video we talked about time budget studies in this video we're going to dive into a little teeny weeny bit of physics we're not gonna go in don't worry it's not gonna be anything too heavy um because oh my god it'd give you a headache and i don't want to give you a headache um so let's just explain because you're probably thinking what's physics got to do with behavior um because it's behavior is heavily biological right um so biology comes into it quite a lot however physics does come into it when you're looking at how an animal moves and the force on which it uses to move its legs and the angles and the degrees and whatever it uses and how it actually like a bird how it flies so this was actually quite an interesting topic um i sucked at physics so i thought but i got a pretty decent grade on this um so we're going to be looking at the difference between quadrupeds and bipeds and we're going to be looking at two two different experiments and don't worry these experiments are hypothetical these experiments never took place and um no animals were hurt because they never happened okay so let's start off with what these words mean so a quadruped so quad mean four is any animal that walks on four legs and a biped is like me and you we walk on two legs so we're looking at the different two experiments like i said one is on a dog and one is on an ostrich um somebody did have an ethical issue with this when they wrote uh, when they read it that don't come from a scientific background and that was to do with predator sounds being played to the ostrich to make the ostrich run which there's no ethical issues with that because an ostrich obviously is a wild animal and do come in contact with predators quite a bit and they do hear them and they're not the most intelligent of animals as in they stick their head into the sand and they're like i can't see you so you can't see me even though they've got this big feathery backside and body that's still out of the sand that screams hey i'm over here anyway so we're looking at the differences between the bipedal and quadrupedal movement and we're going to talk through some experiments in that so it although it may appear simple to regard a bipedal so two-legged animal and a quadrupedal or like an animal locomotion as different only in the number of limbs that are involved because a quadruped has twice as many as a biped the reality is a lot less cut so the anatomy of every species differs which you should be aware of that and that does not matter whether it's a bipedal or if it is a quadrupedal animal um it just uh, all depends on the, the the species really um as you know we don't have the same anatomy as a chimpanzee it's very similar but it's not quite the same uh and we certainly don't have the same anatomy as a dog So we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna give an overview of the different types of movement um, and bearing in mind that the physiology of the animals does have an effect on the animal's movement because like I said, we're looking at a dog and an ostrich. So we're look, having a, this is all about an investigation of ground reaction forces, hence the physics, uh, which is, we're going to attempt to explain all of that um which i think i did pretty well with so i'm gonna introduce you to another little word that you may not know of okay and that's a gate not a g 
A T E testing my dyslexia there uh not gate as in something that you shut um but a g a i t which is um the process of moving so how do i explain this like a horse so you start off with a horse and it's walking that's one gate it then moves into trotting and that's another gate and then it can go into a gallop which is yet another gate and then it goes into a canter and that's another game so a gate is the manner of locomotion the movement they may transition into a faster and different motion like i've just explained with the horse um so the sustainable sustainability is another word that we're going to be uh, mentioning a lot and that is how balanced an animal is on the ground okay so you have a, a center of mass and if your center of mass moves out and is too far to the left or too far to the right or too far forward or too far back that's when you're going to trip over that's what causes you to trip because your your um center of mass okay there's no balance there because it's gone too far forward and you can't keep up with it we're looking at um uh so stability is the balance of an animal um is on the ground how stable it is and that's without which will result in falling over okay which is all to do with this i've just explained so the ground reaction forces that's another thing we're going to be looking at um and those are the forces that either push up against the animal and the forces that are exhibited by the animal back to the ground um i really wish that i <laughs> had something to explain to you one second and i will introduce you to fangs so since we're talking about a dog in one of these experiments he's fans again he's a plastic um halloween decoration okay so let's use fangs to explain these ground reaction forces so the force is pushing up against him so my finger that's pushing up against him but then he is counteracting that force subconsciously by pushing down and that's how gravity works okay so he's pushing down there's a force pushing him up but because he's pushing down he stays where he is okay that force gets cancelled out um which is just how gravity works So by beetle hat animals, they only have two gates because they've only got two legs. So you can only go from a walk to a run um, because a jog, again, it, it's just a slow version of a run. So yeah, it doesn't really count. Where quad quadrupeds, as you would expect because they have more legs, they have more gates, okay? Um, like I mentioned with the horse, the number of gates that a quadruped has also does depend on the species as well. And in order for an animal to change its gait, as you would imagine, it also has to alter its stance. So obviously when an animal is walking, they, they put one foot in front of the other. And when they're running, they might put two in front um, and push. So they have the two and they push that back but they're back to go forward and then go back um it's really hard to explain because um fan does not have fangs does not have jumps like that so i can't really show you with him um so it, it right so a gate is distinguished by the with the position of the legs and the the animals the how it's the body of the animal strides so bipedal running consists of uh one movement per step so one leg per step um there is a posh word for it but i, I think that's just a headache to go into that um in a vertical manner of the body so it's like i, I use my fingers so it's like that yeah um whereas oh and bipedal 
Um, so we go faster. That's sort of running. That's maybe not the best example. You can see my fingers there, but um, and obviously with two legs you walk a lot slower than you do with four legs so anybody who has a horse um they take big strides they walk really really fast will know that it is it can be hard to keep up with a horse um so unlike a bipedal animal so the the the, the picture example that i have of a bipedal animal is actually a flamingo um anyway so the quadruped animal's centre of mass moves up and down twice, right, twice per stride, making the hind ones of the forelimbs behave like two separate bipedals, okay? That's important um, to get your head around for the, re for the rest of it. Um, so bipedal, okay, your centre of mass doesn't really move, um, whereas if you've got four legs it does and that's so that your legs work as if it's two separate entities rather than just the one if you will um or two separate bipeds as as i've said um and having four limbs means that you've got a little bit more support as well um and your body mass obviously doesn't need to be separated equally across your body um, for every type of gait because you have more limbs to support yourself and keep yourself up um so most quadrupedal gaits consist of the animals keeping at least three legs on the ground um, and this helps them to stay stable yeah I say statically stable, but it's the same thing. Um, and there's the stability of, of an animal that relates to where an animal's um, central mass can be found. Like I mentioned, if you're if it goes too far forward, you're going to fall over. If it goes too far back, you'll fall back, etc. We won't go into that study. Um, because it's rather complicated um and i am aware that there's 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 a lot of t i mean the yeah we're not going to go into that um it the it's just a little bit too complicated Right, okay, I don't know if this is going to be a little bit more simple, but we see animals use use forces that are either pendicular, I might not be saying that right, um, to counter or uh, to or counter the direction of travel. Um, and more forces produce than necessary for an animal to move, assist in the stability of the animal moving into different gates. Again, it's all to do with the same body mass. Um, and when things are pendicular, just think of um, a pendulum on a around five o'clock. That goes back and forth like that. Yeah. So. Why are we doing these experiments? Well, ground reaction forces are hard to observe as the animal creates mutually opposing forces that cancel each other out. Remember when we um, used fans, he's pushing down on the ground, but there's a force pushing back up at him. That cancels out. And that's how he can just sit and be a good little dog. When an animal has four legs, the forces that are exerted by the animal are half of which is exerted by the animal with two legs. I don't know if that is going to make a lot of sense. It's basically, if you've got two legs, you've only got those two uh, points of contact on the floor. So you have to exert more force to keep that body where it is where if you've got four you can share the amount of force that is being exerted between each set of legs uh, i hope this is making sense um if anybody has any questions stick them down in the comments and i'll try my best to answer them um so the quadrupeds animal's center of body mass is then spread 
equally over the animal's body, making quadrupedalism more stable than bipedalism, because like I said, you've got more um, limbs to help keep you up and support you. So there was one study that was conducted um, and it looked at the ground reaction forces that horses exhibit to create a press, which was going to help with the lameness. It's very clever stuff. They fitted the support to one forelimb and one hind limb. And the researchers found that the distribution of the transverse horizontal ground reaction force was small. Let's not worry too much about that. Um, and there was a decrease in the longitude horizontal ground reaction force. Again, let's not worry too much about that. Um, in the lame forelimb, so it, it was compensated by the upper forelimb, as you would expect, because um, when you've hurt your leg or your ankle or your hip or whatever, you tend to put more force and more of your weight onto the one that um, is good. Uh, speaking for somebody who has hip dysplasia and has problems with her hips passively coming out all the time um, I know how that feels so yeah basically it was just looking at the fact that this hind limb um, it, um, the, the lame limb because it was lame it caused more force and the other limbs um, than what you would normally see so then you do get some sneaky little animals that are known to use both quadrupedalism and bipedalism. And one of those is the chuffed capuchin monkey. Remember, monkeys have tails, apes don't. Easiest way to remember. There's more to it than that, but that's the easiest way to remember. And the way in which the capuchin monkey recovers its energy from the bipedalism is low compared to the high amounts of energy that are recovered after the use of quadrupedalism. This means that the monkey uses more force to walk on two legs than it does when it's walking on all fours. So generally it's going to choose to walk on all fours rather than just the two. So, like, yeah, we won't go into that too much. Let's just, um, oh, this was nothing to do with the experiments. I'm sorry, I thought it was. So, I don't want to go into too much about it um, because it gets rather complicated. So, we'll just conclude and wrap it up. And hopefully, I've made sense and hopefully, you've learned something new. So, to conclude, bipedal animals locomote vertically and only have two gates, which is walking and running. And bipedal walking gait, the animal will swing its legs, which creates a one foot per stride. A bipedal running gait is caused by one per stride or collision with the aerial phase. However, quadrupedal animals look more in a horizontal manner and have many gates, the number of which all depends on the species of the animal. All quadrupedal animals' centre of mass move up and down per stride. The forelimbs and their hind limbs act as two separate bipeds the center of mass moving twice in a quadruped animal is spreads equally over the four limbs and four-legged animals much more th stable than two-legged animals what also is the stability of quadrupedid animals is that the ground reaction forces which are exerted are half the amount of force of a biped exerts the less force that is needed to help keep the animal upright and locomoting, the more stable the animal is. And using four legs to locomote uses a lot less energy than locomoting with two legs. Overall, quadrupedal locomotion has evolved better than bipedal locomotion. So basically what that's saying is our four-legged friends use a lot less energy when they're standing upright and walking than what we do because they have twice as many limbs as us so they have um, 
more stability and that they can share the amount of energy um, and forces they absorb exert sorry between the two and i'm sorry that i mentioned um the dog and the ostrich um that is obviously a very different assignment it was under the same thing it was looking at the differences between um again you come you did an experiment between two animals um a bipedal and a quadrupedal <laughs> i'll just i'll talk you through that now so what I said was that you have these false reaction plates, which all you need to know is that they uh, counter calculate the force on which an animal is producing when they step onto this plate. So these plates were going to be in um, on the ground for an ostrich. Um, we were going to get the ostrich to run across these plates in a straight line and the way we were going to do that was with um, the sounds of their predators which would have only caused the ostrich a tiny little bit of stress but not too much and it wasn't going to be eaten at the end of the day and as it ran across and uh, we could collect the data from the force from the fast plates um, and then we could create a 3D animation of the way that this animal moves um and the dog was we were looking at how much oxygen they intake when they're running so we're going to put like um little oxygen masks that were going to be made for different dogs um i will get into a video but there is three different types of dogs mainly um to do with the just bring fans in the nose okay so thangs actually is uh Uh, I can't remember what he is. Um, I think he's a mesical phallic. I might be wrong on that, but I, anyway, I'll, I will go through what they are basically. So, um, a mesical phallic uh, doesn't have a nose. It's, it's like your your pugs, your, your bulldogs, those types of things. And then you've got um, dogs that have got these square jaws and a little bit longer noses, and then you've got the long thing nose of a whippet. I can't quite remember. I get them mixed up because they do sound similar. Um, but I will do another video on that. So we would have made a little mask, oxygen, ox oxygen masks for them and placed them onto their head. We would have trained them. The owners would have been there. They would have been water. And we'd put them on a treadmill and we'd make them run for a little while, a very short period of time. Um, and the, the period of time would differ depending on the species of the dog um, because uh, the brassicophallics the dogs that don't seem to have noses like if any bulldogs and boxes um, and even King Charles Spaniels they have quite difficulty breathing um, and I'll go into that in a later video why that is um, and we were the oxygen masks would then be taking information to a machine which would be telling us how much oxygen they're intaking and how much carbon dioxide they're exhaling um, and we would be able to to work out how much energy through that that they're using to to be able to run and how that difference differs between each of the three different types of dogs um but that's enough of that because i think this was a I mean, I've been talking for um, 20 odd minutes now and I know that was physics and I know that was a bit heavy. I hope I've done my utter best to try and explain everything in um, in a way that you can understand. It's really hard. I maybe should get a whiteboard and some pens and stuff like this. Um, but yeah, like I said, if you have any questions and you didn't understand anything, please just drop me a comment um, and I will try my best to answer you and explain myself a little bit clearer in certain things. Um, but other than that, if you've learned something new and you've enjoyed the content that I have been sharing, then down here will be my face. So you can click on that and you can subscribe and you can turn on your notification bell and you will um, receive notifications when I upload a video, uh, which is every Wednesday and Saturday at the moment. And if you want to know anything, any other animal related videos, they'll be in this playlist down here so you can click and check them out and please don't forget to share this video with all of your friends um uh that, that yeah that's that's really important and it's going to help support me as well so i will see you in the next video bye